first of all, you just have to realize, okay, everything else is on the back burner. This is what we have to take care of now. And I tell you what, by the time you get through making juices, making uh, coffee for coffee enemas, uh, getting preparing to do shots, uh, taking care of your spouse or your friend after they've had the shots, um, giving them encouragement, making doctor's calls, make, just remembering all the little things that they simply can't remember because they're too uncomfortable. They, it's just too darn hard to do by yourself. You need to have somebody cook for you and, and prepare foods for you. And, and you learn new ways to cook. And you learn new ways to um, budget your time. And as you can see, it was all very worthwhile. I don't know. I don't think it's possible. I mean, it's, it's, the amount of work that, that Jerry puts into this is, is, is immense. I can tell you right now. And I just don't think a person... I don't think it's possible to do it by yourself. I mean, you feel so crappy. I can't imagine getting up trying to make juice or trying to make coffee and getting back to rest, you know, and it's just, it's, it's, it's time consuming and it's, uh, it's, you need a lot of support, your family, your friends. You know, in our community, people have watched what John has gone through and have been so inspired. And I like, I, I try not to get up on a soapbox and, and just say to people, you know, the, the wonderful thing is, there's more than one way to skin a cat. There's no doubt about it. There are people that are cancer survivors from the traditional therapies. However, there are other answers out there. And for people... I was lucky. You know, I worked really hard. I had some money put away, but I still had to hawk myself to do this. You know, my insurance doesn't pick up one single nickel of it, you know. And had I gone through the chemo process, it would have cost them at least as much, if not more. Oh. And I had been gone a long time ago to boot, so the only person that gained was the medical profession, not me, for sure. And I just think that, you know, there needs to be some way for us to, to get the kind of help we would like to have and make it affordable for more people, instead of just people that can they can dig deep and maybe find enough 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 funds to deal with it, you know. And even so, it still puts a, it still puts a pinch on us, me, my wife, my kids, you know, to, to do this. And, uh, and uh, even though going to Mexico is way cheaper than it was to, to deal with uh, conventional medicine up here, it's still it's hard, you know. Things we thought we'd be able to do, you know, in the next ten years, maybe we can't do all those things now because we spent the money trying to get fixed up to keep to keep moving. And I think it's uh, maybe time for you guys to try and figure out some way to, uh, to uh, offer, us, offer us the alternative to normal medicine and maybe light a fire in the insurance industry to help start paying for it, you know? Everybody benefits, you know? I get to live longer, they get to pay less money. I think that's the bottom line. Been dead by the time you did the iron bite. Oh, geez, I've been dead. I've been dead a year for sure. <laughs> In this last September, actually mid, mid August through through the first part of September, we we took a bike ride from here over through Southern Oregon down to Northern California coast and all the way up through Oregon and Washington and down back down through Eastern Washington and into Idaho and back home. We were gone probably 15 days and it was a great trip. But you know, there's there two couples riding and it just kind of didn't seem like. We were going fast enough or far enough, you know, and, and so I thought, you know, I've been thinking about this thing called the iron butt, and it's kind of a, it's just kind of an association of guys that are sort of like to ride farther than they need to go, you know, and it's always been, I, I've always been curious about it, I wanted to do it, and I, I was sure I could do it anyhow, but in the last couple of years, I just didn't have enough energy to do it, and basically it's, you got to ride a thousand miles in 24 hours, and uh, to get this silly little license plate, that's all you get. It costs you actually money. You get nothing. You don't even get a t-shirt. <laughs> uh, I trip for home like 
three days, I go, you know what, Karen, I, I, I'm, I want to do this Iron Bell thing. I feel really good. And so I uh, left like a quarter to three in the morning and headed up through Idaho and Oregon, up into Washington, over to Montana, back to Idaho. And basically, like I said, I left like quarter to three in the morning. I got back at uh, about 12 o'clock that night. I had done 1,200 miles in 22 hours. And never got tired, never got bored, hard to imagine. No iTunes, no MP3, you know, but uh, I had a lot of juices that you made, you know, carrot juices, green juices, and, uh, and so basically every time I'd stop for gas and get off the bike for a second, I'd have a glass of juice, I'd have a handful of gourd, maybe a banana or something, and I just kept going, and so I never ate a lot of food, but I never, ever got tired, I mean, I really didn't get tired, and I never got bored, it's hard to, I say it's hard to imagine. You know, yeah. you don't, you don't have I got back. I was extremely pleased with the way it went. But I do it again. I doubt there's there's next levels of everything, like any sport in this world. But I'm, I'm convinced now that if I could do that one, I could do the next one, and the next one, and the next one. So basically, now I guess we'll just cruise around and have fun.